are operating from um, from somewhere where we just take decentralization as naturally good. So I want to dive a little bit more into like why is it good, like and kind of uh, doing the um, being the uh, devil's advocate. Um, why is it good actually? Like because there is. Uh, so many problems with it, like the, the system cannot self-regulate that much. Uh, if there is any uh, problem or collapse, like it cannot um, tell if there is, um, it cannot differentiate the, the truth or um, I mean, the, uh, the good or bad states uh, it, because it cannot look at itself. A uh, democratic way of um, decision making, is it really possible, is it an idea out there? Um, and um, the questions are on that, but I would like you to introduce yourself uh, to, to begin with. Um, maybe we start with Tony, and then I, I'm going to ask more uh, detailed questions about it. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Tony. Uh, originally from Russia, but uh, uh, living location independent for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, my main background is in marketing, 18 years, uh, but last Five years have been in the crypto and Web3 world. Uh, now mainly my main focus is DAOs, researching, uh, participating in some DAOs, and also music NFTs, uh, basically experimenting. It's a very new market, it's like less than a year old. So we are, as other companies are experimenting in this field. And I mean, uh, as uh, DAOs, and music NFTs are also, it's very community-based uh, world, uh, so I'm really excited. Uh, but your question, I guess we answer later, right? Listen. Yes, please. Cool. Thanks. Uh, sure. Did you answer now? Oh, no, no. Yeah, we, we'll just um, start with the uh, yeah, cool. um, presentation um, introduction. But you, uh, if you want to add uh, something about your background more, so my name is Rene, um, actually now I know I'm in, into linked data and the semantic web. Um, I've been a software engineer for um, long, quite, quite some time, I don't remember how long. I've been developing a bit longer than that. Um, I'm also very fascinated about the potential of decentralization in Web3 and co-ownership. And I find this a very interesting question. Um, uh, here, we'll go take it. Uh, my name is Alex, I'm an architect. Uh, a stable unit uh, project. So I'm five years full time in the blockchain industry. Uh, former engineer of uh, Facebook, Amazon, Manage, have not like DAOs because it's a new way to organize a big mass of people for a common goal. So it's uh, very fascinating because right now we are living in a very unique time. Well, maybe, I don't know, like one generation away from a singularity if it happens. But at least in a pivotal moment where quite a lot of organizational structures, which used to be the only way to kind of unite people before, becomes slowly obsolete towards like new type of organizational structure on you know, these metaverses things. So it's very complicated to grasp what's going on. Sounds like buzzwords all of this. But I'm sure you were like, uh, very soon we will see a lot of powerful examples of, uh, uh, of uh, like more cases of such type of organizations. So I'm very excited to look forward to see it. So I'm just going to ask the first question this time starting from here. Uh, why, do, why do you think decentralization is good? Why do we need it? What's wrong with decentralized um, systems generally? Um, and especially um, systems um, that are centralized, but also involving humans? Well, short answer, but if something can happen, people would, if it's if it possible to make, and some people in theory might benefit, it will happen eventually. It's why, like for example, democracy is better than autocracy. Like the leader, dictator might be good, right? But, but after that, like if there is a unchecked powers, eventually if something possible to do, which will benefit like uh, some people, but will just benefit like majority of people, it will happen, and we'll see proof of this again and again. So centralization is a technical ability to do certain bad things, while like if intentions are good, everything works fine. But as soon as intentions stop being good, everything start breaking up, like. 
and we see because of these tragical events like in Europe, like we see where the limitations of the banking system are very clear. And decentralization is just a guarantee, like insurance, that even if it's bad actors will take over a system, nothing bad can happen with like a majority of users, majority of participants in the system. It's kind of different systems, organizations, financial system, governments, and so on. So TLDR, like decentralization, is a guarantee that bad things cannot happen by design, not like it. People with good intentions do not let it happen because, well, people change, intentions change, but look, the ability stays. Yeah, I echo that. And um, one thing specifically that comes to mind is uh, being filtered. Or, um, for some reason, I can't find the right word, but right now in, in Web2, um, the question is, do we trust the centralized parties? And if you have a big social media platform, um, you have a lot of responsibilities, and you also have governments that force your hand to do certain things. And sometimes maybe for good reasons, but sometimes maybe it's questionable, and maybe that's not what the majority would like, but it's what the government enforces. And sometimes we don't even know exactly what's happening uh, in the background. And so with decentralization, there is not one party that controls that and that can be forced to do certain things, to censor certain people or to filter information. And so, um, yeah, that means we can trust that not one actor or the government or other parties can force the centralized party to, to do certain things. We can, uh, because it's decentralized, you would have to force everyone's hands, which is a lot more difficult to do. Yeah, I think the biggest uh, benefit of decentralization now is not that it's uh, intrinsically better than like centralization, like com like let's compare Web two and Web three. But Web3 has a benefit that we actually start over knowing the mistakes we've already made. Because everything with Web3 is still, is still a promise. Even decentralization, in, I mean, Bitcoin it is decentralized uh, to some extent, uh, maybe Ethereum, but most of other projects are hugely centralized. Uh, and uh, I mean, DAO specifically, they give that promise that we potentially can uh, create decentralized systems where the actors there, there are like uh, uh, benefits and uh, like uh, something that uh, um, uh, how's it, what's the word uh, something bad like slashing for example of the stake so uh, basically it's just a promise and what we as a market are working on to try to make this promise knowing the previous mistakes. If we can do it, I, mean, I hope so, but uh, it's still a, a pretty long way to go. Maybe I can, I can uh, just add a couple of things. Uh, well, I'm from Turkey, so I, uh, it's actually coincidental uh, in, in, in parallel how I um, started uh, learning about blockchain um, and the time I started watching my own country uh, being a democracy turning into the uh, tyranny of the elected. So I think uh, the biggest in, uh, issue in centralized systems is that like, what's that center? Who are these people? Who's going to choose those people? How long are they going to stay? If anything happens, if they lose their um, reasoning um, abilities and everything, um, or is there any force that can intervene? Like how these things operating is also another uh, thing. Like how are um, are we going to make sure uh, the central decision making uh, unit is going to be mostly like mo mostly right and um, okay? So the intention is, um, I mean, also requires uh, basically trust, and we see in the central uh, centralized systems. If the, the majority of people's trust um, is going down and they lose uh, trust in the central um, government, uh, that's basically the real cause of hyperinflation. So uh, these are super um, sensitive um, 
um, balances. And the, yeah, the second thing is all, obviously the democracy uh, is related um, to, um, because most of the time we think that we are actually living in a democratic um, the situation, democratic um, times, let's say. Uh, but it's not really like that, is it? Like we, we are the whole democracy is the, the let's say representative democracy is all about um, transferring our rights to choose um, in exchange of the liberty of not to think about all this uh, all all the things all the time. Um, so we tend to um, choose that. Also, we are willing to. Um, get rid of that um, heaviness of the, uh, making choice every day and uh, thinking about complex politics, economic or whatsoever. Uh, but also if you go to the, the financial um, stage, uh, nothing in the corporate world is basically decentralized. There's always a top-down decision-making system. So when we are talking about uh, decentralized um, de decentralization, uh, it has also a lot of uh, layers, like it's not in a, in a democratic centralized government, it's not possible to make the um, value generation system also uh, uh, also democratic basically. Um, so that also goes um, together, but I, I totally agree with the historicity notion, so now which is also another thing because, um, okay, maybe there was a time the centralized systems were um, actually more preferable, but the time passes, like there, there are, there's an accumulation of the um, mistakes that happened. So uh, decentralization or the application of decentralized systems and uh, not being perfect, there's still kind of a lot to um, experiment and avoid well, uh, the mistakes that already happened, basically. So I want to also ask the, uh, uh, the self-regulation aspect of it, and um, I, I mean, if you like the um, having more technical um, aspect, um, is it really um, how a system being decentralized? How can it uh, talk about its own state? And it's like, is that really a super big issue? Um, how to self-regulate? Do we really need to always? come up with kind of a um, collective decision-making process as well? Um, and how big is that question, really? So maybe, with Alex, you can start. Well, I think it's very similar to, again, like how governments operate in different type of uh, society, like a democratical versus like a very uh, authoritarian. Where, uh, like, that was just a structure, how you can, well, Organize it like on a blockchain from like not a paper work, but like technical point of view. What rules do you enforce inside of this DAO? It depends on your community. It's my, it's super flexible. It's all programmable. Every rules of the game you imagine, you can just program it and try to see if this is like do people accept it or not. I feel that the benefit, like, right. If you do it without any kind of rules, like just just a practical example, a stable unit, like if it would be completely plain, like everyone are equal, everyone propose a lot of ideas, it's great, so many talented people, but without a common direction, without sort of an internal uh, admin who would try to guide people and take more incentive than other people, it will just people you know pull in different directions. It's very quickly goes over the point of. Uh, like a critical mass of interest and people just like lose interest at all because it's unclear what to do, unclear whom to speak, etc. So there are not, based on my knowledge, the golden bullet for, for adults. Like you, you apply this structure, it works just automatically. It works very well, everyone are happy. So we see like thousands of experiments on blockchain right now, different projects, try different examples, different rules, different like even structures. So we have a health capital coin, half social capital coin in form of NFT, so it's an experiment and so on. So I don't know the answer, but what is cool that you can do pretty much everything you imagine. Everything what you can formulate on a paper, you can write in English words, it means you can write in a quote, it means like you can establish rules. What is cool, if those rules are set and set in the right way, there is no like 
technical possibility to take over if some bad actors would reveal itself. Like we have a very interesting case in the project I cannot tell when one of the uh, uh, seemingly founders uh, actually was a malicious player from the beginner. Because like you, you don't know who these people are, everyone like have only nicknames. And like I, I knew there is like a few founders and they thought that one person was a friend of anyone else. So everyone thought that. But it turned out this person was a, a hacker or like a, a scammer. So it was a kind of so big reveal for all of us. But for us, some mistakes and a lot of like uh, fails would happen on, on a way to discover this like uh, perfect model for DAOs and be only in the beginning of this experiment. So, but again, benefit that if rules set right, it works like perfect, nobody can take advantage. Uh, disadvantage right now that nobody knows what this structure is. Everyone trying and failing and some success stuff. We'll see how it goes, but my ability to have a have ability to establish with flexible rules is absolutely amazing because uh, paperwork companies, like classical type of companies, you're very limited in what kind of structure I allow to do. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with Alex uh, to a large degree that um, there is no golden, golden uh, bullet. There is a lot of potential, a lot of possibilities, and we're just starting to explore. And um, one way in which I see, like, if you're all together making decisions on something, that's pretty clear. We have good structures for that. Uh, the majority vote, or this much percent of people need to vote on something, and so many need to agree, and then we accept it. But once you start to delegate a little bit, um, and you give people certain responsibilities, it becomes more difficult uh, when you say self-reflective, like who then checks? Do we go back to some sort of structure? And what we, we are in the data space, so what do people have access to? Is there any sensitive information there? Um, and what people often or projects often refer to is if it becomes difficult to manage who has access to what, it's just to open more. But that means it, there's more sensitive things uh, available to more people. And um, ultimately, the main thing I want to point out is that even if the structure gets better and the DAO thinks it's doing great, where is the self-reflection with society? So ultimately, uh, in the topic of centralization and decentralization, um, sure, we can create decentralized things uh, that are really hard to take down, um, but they're disconnected from the current uh, legal society. And there's a lot of potential benefits to that, but there's also uh, downsides to that. Like if there is DAOs that are malicious, that can organize themselves very well to do things that the rest doesn't want. The question is, who keeps them accountable, right? And so if it's not connected to any legal structures, then we don't have any tools for that. And in, in that sense, there is some benefit to the old world or having, having a centralized connection, uh, potentially for protecting the rest. Um, so just being a bit of a devil's advocate there and saying it's not always necessarily good especially who is, who is checking the DAO itself outside of the DAO. I guess I, I don't have a lot to add here. Uh, I totally agree that uh, it's uh, an experimentation field where there are no silver bullets, no... Uh, I mean, everyone is, is experimenting. That's, I think, is the main benefit of crypto in general, Web3 uh, also, that it's like a... Cambrian explosion where we are just uh, throwing each possible hypothesis idea trying to execute on it and as we do a lot of them, a lot of them fail like percentage wise probably 99% or something like that but as there are so many of them the absolute number of successes is pretty high as well so uh, yeah I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to add to it a little bit. Um, so, basically what we're afraid of uh, with the um, uh, collective decision making is the, uh, the mob rule. So, uh, decision uh, making, um, there's, there's a lot of, especially the, how the DAOs are implemented, um, because most of the times uh, there's kind of rewarding mechanism that rewards um, um, if any particular decision 
um, is on the same direction of the majority, right? So, um, th for instance, that um, on the other side can uh, create, um, it can the, the kind of uh, misdirect people, even if you're, because eventually <laughs> you're getting paid, you are, there's a reward by that. And um, going always um, with the um, decisions um, that uh, the other uh, people, like the majority, would uh, go for, um, I think it is super uh, destructive for the actual thing. So how DAOs and collective decision making can also empower um, the uh, unique voices, giving space for diversity, although it's going to be the majority's uh, decision in the end, it, that's what's going to be applied in the end. It is, it is a huge thing and, and I don't know an, um, a practical imp implementation of that so far. Um, another thing is um, the, um, um, okay, so eventually uh, once a decision made, totally let's say democratic way, um, and there comes a moment and uh, that decision is implemented and there's a real life um, consequences of it, like that's usually um, is reflected to the price or uh, the value of the total DAO and the community and everything. Um, but it's very hard to actually reflect and um, basically create a collective memory of each and every single action, uh, looking back to the um, to the each and every um, single action um, and kind of converting that back to the uh, society or the uh, community um, in a, and making sure that the, uh, that the whole DAO as a whole um, learns from the mistakes that's already uh, done uh, and avoid that in the future. Um, but people basically, like uh, the Web3 and uh, DAO uh, enemies, <laughs> let's say, um, they're, they're to talking about these aspects in different ways. Obviously, not this, uh, like not, a, not uh, as an insider, but um, one thing that they're actually pushing for the laws and law and regulation, right? So uh, that's the failsafe um, of uh, like a saver from uh, in keeping the, the DAOs and the communities um, in in in, uh, in space. But I think communities, just because these are not. Um, systems that are there and operating by itself just um, I don't know not not, not a um, 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 not a, not a web uh, itself but it is designed to uh, for for humans to interact with it I think communities can play that role the the fail safe um, and um, there comes the uh, um, problems about the uh, um, basically um, the, 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 uh, the real value and how to assess a real value by um, making space for the diversity and also empowering the individuals and um, how to assess the individuals um, contribution to any society any uh, web tree or DAO um, and how to um, basically assess uh, that majority, the, uh, the, the holistic value that is eventually uh, occurring as the, uh, uh, on, on top of it. So maybe you would like to start with I'm not sure I, I quite followed your uh, second part. Uh, so basically, it's, um, as, an, as individuals, um, as an individual, we can uh, contribute to the, uh, to the DAO. Like we are basically uh, proposing something and there's a, uh, it passes and it's eventually, um, it's, it, like an action is taken. Um, basically, you can b build a meritocratic um, system where individuals uh, with their successful uh, proposals uh, can build their reputation in the system. Uh, but how, in time, uh, by keeping that, assessing um, an individual va uh, value, assessing the actual contributions, and also assessing the, the actual uh, DAO's worth in so many different layer, layers. Um, w w uh, is it really necessary, for instance, but b b just because there's also compensation, there's a monetary reward for that, um, what are the um, ways 
uh, and the strengths that we can apply uh, to actually make sure that everybody is getting compensated the way they uh, as much as they con uh, contribute. Uh, I think that uh, your voting power and also your ability to be compensated shouldn't be uh, uh, only um, dependent on how many proposals you uh, created, how many of them were successful, not. There should be some, and I don't see it yet implemented, but a lot of people are talking about it, uh, that we need to somehow assess the actual contribution, uh, depending on the project, it can be anything, development, I don't know, marketing, uh, community management, whatever. So we need to assess uh, many different uh, variables to actually uh, give some specific voting power to person. This way we can actually, uh, plus also their stake, uh, like maybe uh, the assets they froze, uh, and uh, all of these variables collectively, they can be more, I think a better solution than just the number of tokens you have, just the number of proposal you uh, created, or, or any other single variable. And uh, to your, first part of the question, you mentioned that uh, how do we uh, ensure that people are not just following others. We actually, right now in the market, have a very different problem and it's much bigger. Uh, very few people actually, actually participate in the, in the voting. So it's like normally, I don't know, a few percent. Uh, so I think we first need to think of how to solve that problem and then we'll see maybe People will be following, maybe they won't, but for now we have like very little data to see uh, what's the case. Okay, yeah, so there's, there's two issues that we're talking about here that you're mentioning. Uh, one is uh, governance and voting and the other is being rewarded for what you do. And what you're talking about is how can we do this best in a granular way? How can we really reward somebody for what they've done? And that's a complex question. To track everything that's happening and everything every, everyone is doing and come up with a good way to agree on where the value lies is difficult. And to just for one moment come back to the decentralized versus centralized, we and our team had discussions about this and we're very excited about tracking value. But there's even, there is value in just having a, a monthly salary and a list of things to do where we don't need to track exactly the long-term consequence of every action because it can get complex especially if we all need to vote on each other's contribution and things like that nevertheless it's very exciting i want this world to exist where we really get rewarded for the value that we add um, for me or starting with um, being rewarded or staying on that topic there's a project called source uh, which is source like the source and then C-R-E-D, uh, which I'm uh, personally very passionate about and that we're looking at in, in our project as well uh, to use in the future. And what they do is they allow you to come up with all sorts of systems because you really need to, uh, for your project, say what, what you attribute value to. Um, and they allow you to track that and, and it gives you a score, a score of your contribution. But crucially, this score can change over time and it can go down. So, um, for example, if, we, if I make a contribution now, um, maybe it's not recognized until five years later that it was an amazing contribution and suddenly it gets very valuable. We want to be able to reward that initial contribution. And opposite, uh, if I do something now and it seems very re relevant, but later we change most of what I did, um, it was valuable until that point, where, until we changed it. And so that's a very cool system for that. And just to explain that a bit more, the, the way they do that is you have a score now that is a reflection of all your contributions and how we as a community value your contributions right now. And that score can be used to distribute uh, funds. So if there's each month a uh, thousand or hundred thousand or whatever, can be distributed based on your score right now, which represents how we currently feel about all your contributions so far. And this means that if I did something which is valuable for three years, but then later gets um, redone and is not valuable at all anymore, for these three years, my score was high because it was valued highly. But then it changes and my score lowers and naturally I get rewarded less. Um, so that's something interesting to, be, to look into. And then 
in terms of governance, um, yeah, personally, I don't like so much where uh, the whole community has just one governance coin. Sometimes that's interesting, but you kind of want specialized decisions. Yeah. Sometimes you want people with knowledge in the field to be able to make a decision that the majority may actually um, possibly not fully agree with or probably don't understand. And so do they have the right knowledge and understanding to make the right decision? And so, yeah, we can use things like this where we're, where we're uh, tracking contributions and giving a score to that, but also tracking which area that's happening in and dividing uh, the area of decision making into sub-areas. And then in these areas give people the, uh, the voting power or the responsibilities to make certain choices without having to go back to the collective based on the value they've added and based on their knowledge and experience. But there's still kind of, um, in the first one, there's still an um, assessment of the actual um, value of the DAO at a certain time. Right? And, and for that, going back to the previous point of decentralized systems um, problems, you still need to, um, so you, you cannot basically program it on uh, the uh, blockchain because it needs to kind of uh, get that data from outside as the, because it's not only a price if we're talking about kind of real, um, not only price related or value that can be uh, just monetary value related anything. Uh, so it kind of needs to go outside of, its, uh, of itself and uh, assess the, the values on different um, levels and go back to it and define, okay, that's what, like you did this, that's why uh, we acquired that uh, value kind of, which is a very complex thing. Yeah. Actually, I have a similar question. So that source cred, is it purely assessment based or they also automatically collect something? Uh, it's mostly automatic. So you set the rules for what you're tracking, whether it's Gitcoin contributions mm -hmm. or posts or replies. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I agree, there will always be things that are more feeling-based, where we actually need to vote and assess, do some peer review. I mean, we have coordinate for that. Yeah. yeah. On the development side, I think it is much easier to assess the value yeah. and everything, yeah. but if you're applying that into like, more societal things, and, and yeah, there, there it gets complicated. Yeah. Okay. Well, based on what, how I understood questions, based on answers, were two questions. One of them, in civilization model of a people to participate in a DAO, and the quality of a consensus of a DAO, how good are decisions? Well, as for participation and sense of, well, in a kind of like the most basic case, you can just replicate what any corporation does, well, salary, paycheck, bonuses, stocks, vesting, cliffs, all these things. In a more innovative, like, experimental side of spectrum, it's something closer to massive multiplayer game economies where you got like karma points like gamification everywhere possible which has like a lot of different rules like you can expire during time it can increase if you participate in the voting etc so like my co-founder likes Kanki for example which is like totally like community based and like somehow organized itself I didn't understand how it works uh, but there are we will see many experiments and probably someone will make a tool where you can just choose from a drop list like uh, like this and the position model and goes. And as for decision making quality, uh, there are many different theories and examples. Like for example, uh, Gary Kaspar, for example, versus the world, play chess game, like kind of you have a democracy versus just one smart dude and he won all this stuff. So the question is, is like community decision making really better than just some very uh, experienced person make a decision on the whole of them. And there are different opinions of that, so there is no answer. There are opinions, like Major DAO died, like one of the most uh, biggest DAOs, I believe. Uh, and DeFi space has like, um, as I understood the theory of a scientific minority, basically a smart people self proclaim that we are smart, just delegate your vote for us, we make a decision for you yeah, and not work for them. We're uh, totally like uh, democratic based, like less uh, common DAOs right now, where like everyone have an equal vote and a stable unit experiment of like hybrid structure where like financial capital, like ERC20 is a representation of financial uh, capital and NFT is a representation of a social capital. 
token. So basically, people who have a like a lot of followers on Twitter or did something cool for a project, they have an NFT which has a lot of voting power, but doesn't work a lot. And there are like some like experimentation how we can utilize that. So for example, right now the ideas would have two type of decisions like uh, regular decisions which just change parameters of a system and constitutional decisions where you change the rule of a game and to reach consensus on the constitutional voting you have to get a higher higher threshold and also both financial capital and social capital have to reach consensus whether for regular decisions like doesn't matter just majority so just one of continuum example how it can be organized but I would just, if someone curious how it works, just advise to see what our DAOs do right now, like uh, Friends with Benefits, Flamingo DAO, different like uh, more innovative uh, structures. Well, there are so many interesting things going on, so it's difficult to keep an eye on all of them. And also, I um, th that's also important, um, the um um, skill base, like not one doing everything that one government's um, token, basically. So uh, when we are talking about the decentralization and uh, different mo models, looking back to this, uh, at the history, uh, we tend to think like everything that's been successful on the uh, uh, political area, um, it's it's been decentralized. So why are we trying to actually like come up with uh, something different? But uh, that's not really true. So democratic confederalism uh, is one idea, and it's kind of a mixture of uh, top-down and bottom-up uh, bottom systems. So uh, if I mean, we, it, it, if this is about whole body governance, like we are going to decide um, and think about the things that's about like this room. And then uh, if there's anything more uh, about the, the hotel, then we just go to another time. So there's like not only how to make any particular decision taking each uh, person's opinion, but also how different units based on relevance, based on skill set, based on expertise, based on educational level, based on the topic of education and everything can actually uh, be implemented on decision making and how do these um, units without setting up a hierarchy is going to interact with each other like that can be also another uh, point to liberate so I j want to ask you if you have any questions to ask other uh, the panelists or um, from the crowd maybe based on based on the the things we already uh, mentioned a little bit yes please okay. um, what did I curious about solving in particular when it comes to DAO is the difference between short-term and long-term thinking in DAO decision making. And there's a lot around how to address a bad actor. But sometimes some things aren't inherently good or bad. Sometimes there's things that bring more benefits in the short term, which should benefit certain people within the system. Or sometimes in the longer term, you know, kind of delaying reward can bring about longer term benefits. And so in that structure, is there anything how, how to address short term versus long term decision? Yeah, yeah. flexibility. <laughs> How the answer is? I don't think there is a, a one specific right answer, but I tend to say um, if it's way longer, then the decision process needs to be way longer and include as many as possible. So instead of just like, should we just go out of Brexit or not? It's just nonsense, like, because when you're asking something, like, you're basically reducing a super big political um, de decision into a binary um, question, um, and there lies a lot behind that. Um, so in terms of DAOs and how, uh, like, or any community, let's just say any community, um, the the variate, uh, uh, right, variation of this uh, detailed decision makings and uh, there is a technical side to how to implement and everything um, and still keep the unity uh, in a sense um, but I don't think everything that can be done uh, built in on blockchain for now that's why I think community and the way uh, they interact with each other the way how uh, it's moderated, the way how um, 
the community itself or the founders, the moderator or whatever, uh, it implement and um, invent and um, settle a, a culture, basically. How, how individuals relate to each other um, and how each individual relate to the uh, general purpose and the value of that community. I think that is very important. Um, and yeah, and that's why the, the culture is going to be implemented because eventually we are talking about the, uh, the like, politics is based on um, manipulation, let's say, and conviction. If you can convince the crowd, you, you get the majority anyway. So uh, that's, that's one thing that's really important. But if you talk about the Bitcoin, for instance, just because it's spread it around, it's not really easy to, um, to convince the 51% the of every uh, single node. But is it not possible? It's just not practical. But is it not possible? Yes, obviously, you can now go on uh, the, the community channel and just like make a good campaign if you're a super good marketer you can you can create uh, get the majority um, so I think implementing the DAO or community um, morality in a sense um, is really impl important and complementary so for the longer term things it's it requires a lot of work and not only on chain I would say well, my thoughts a little bit different. So it sounds like you either choose a, a leader of such a DAO or a great story, like uh, for, for such a DAO. Like there are examples like uh, countries or corporations. Uh, they work somewhat similar from a sense that in a corporation you have uh, shareholders and you have a, a board, and the shareholders can influence who would be the board, and board can just either fire or hire a great leader to make a decision. And in the country, uh, people vote for some representative of a common will who ideally have to represent that common will, which is like uh, also not always happens. And I think like my former colleague on Facebook like asked actually Gary Kaspar about this like he versus the world thing and, uh, in, a, in, a, in a kind of like in, in a conversation about like why democracy is a good thing like people doesn't really don't understand politics but well as a professional politician so you can consider them as not very smart in this isn't it better to put someone like i don't know uh, some very very smart guy uh, rule everyone just have a hundred percent of voting power for, for this person and like if i remember correctly his answer was like if you're so smart you can convince people to vote for you and uh, basically this was an uh, answer and i think it resonates with me a lot like if there is a such a disparity between information, like a uh, majority of people do not care about this voting thing, they care about what they think. It's not like they're stupid, I mean, people more or less equally, like, uh, do not understand how complex systems work, but they just spend less time, so they have less information, and decision-making process have to be worse, right, when someone who spends, like, full time to understand how it works. But, well, so far, we've seen that, practically speaking, this, this kind of democratical system when you vote for a representative and a representative for a limited period of a time represents a uh, common will works not good but better than other things which works even less even less well so I think it would be a solution for like a super big DAO or something like that people just vote for some people like as a representative like a president of a DAO for I don't know a year and uh, it might be proved more robust system and ours. But I would say there's uh, the, the decentralization. We always talk about the, uh, the either the leader or the uh, like experienced leader um, or the majority. Uh, but it's also about um, well removing the central point of failure basically. So even if they um, know everything, like one person or a group like knows uh, a lot, uh, there's still um, like you're distributing the, the risk basically so if there's always uh, and then you're going to that danger altogether the consequence of it altogether so there's no chance for much of a conflict between the uh, um, top and the down the uh, majority and everything so it's also good for like because eventually there's a space for each system to make bad decisions it's gonna happen there's no way to avoid it but um, if 
that is, if the results of it, like the, the um, cows and everything, can be avoided as well, that's also a good decision. It's, it's a, or let's say that's a good, uh, bad decision, good system, <laughs> let's say. I would argue that Bitcoin has exactly the same system and the people implicitly chose in the core team where very few individuals, like I 12 or 14, and there is a clear leader among them, like a CEO of Blocks team. So it's uh, exactly the same situation. There are like a consensus of uh, people who support infrastructure miners who collectively decide what like a chain going to be supported uh, with a proof of work and they influenced by the what do you call it? Not expertise, but the reputation uh, of a uh, core team. So it's like people just implicitly voting continuously for one. So it's not that different. But again, we're clear leaders, there's even one guy right now. And uh, well, you consider Bitcoin as decentralized. It's kind of, kind of like a. Uh, I'm not totally against the, the leadership or like, it, it especially task specific leadership because like if you really need to take like instant decision, mm -hmm. it's really super painful to ask 500,000 people to, uh, what do they think about that obviously. Um, so it's uh, the regional relevance, the, the temporal uh, proximity, uh, it depends on the content, and that's why I'm very sympathetic about uh, making, I mean, not reducing all decision making with like one single governance token. Well, if you're just an investment ba uh, based DAO, okay, that's like you can assess the, uh, the value of the token, you can relate that with the uh, performance of the uh, uh, anything that's happening. In. But for if you're talking about the Web3 and DAO communities are the future for any governance, then it, we need to uh, create more options and obviously it's going to be kind of a mixture of uh, leadership, and democratic decision making, education of each and every um, person in the uh, community. I can jump in with some thoughts um, on some of the subjects that were mentioned. Um, so we're talking basically about giving away, like assigning somebody to make a decision for you. If we're saying you're the president, we don't want to have to deal with this, or even in a certain <laughs> region, an area, of, uh, you make decisions there. And um, just one idea is that that like currently we vote for four years in the way democracy works now or, or other numbers of years um, but we can also make that more fluid right uh, maybe we vote on people in certain areas of expertise and that means that they have the right to make decisions on our behalf but we can change it at any instance we can re 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 withdraw that support at any point and so it becomes a bit more fluid and there's a bit more of a check whether we still trust this person um, it's an interesting topic about making long-term decisions. And um, you mentioned something earlier, in or out of Brexit. Like, it depends on how black and white the decision making is. Sometimes we can actually uh, move in a certain direction. And if it's not making a choice right now, yes or no, or even with something like Brexit, maybe we can start moving in a certain direction. And often it's only by moving in a certain direction that people start to realize more the consequences of what's happening. And we're learning about that direction, right? So um, there's something there about um, coming up with systems that still allow us to make smaller decisions towards the big decision, where we can still steer uh, away from things. And one last thing, uh, you mentioned earlier also memory, um, not repeating the mistakes from the past. and. I'm um, not quite sure this is fully related, but I think it is. So, if we're making decisions as a collective, like maybe we don't even know that it's important and we're, we're putting some, someone in power to, to do that, but at some point the collective realizes, oh, this is the consequence and this is, uh, we don't want this. And so we withdraw it from the region and we make it a collective thing. But the problem with collective decision making is that everyone will need to be informed to a certain degree to make the right decision. Sure. And this is where I think um, 
either with uh, the things I talked about with linked data and semantic AI or different systems that track the decisions that have been made and if the system understands the decisions that have been made in a rich and nuanced way, we can say, okay, this is what we're deciding about now and if we have an interface that can bring up decisions from the past that were related and remind people what went wrong and, and really make it efficient to inform people and have a dialogue with people so that, yeah, we can trust people to make the right choices. It's not that they're stupid, I totally agree. But at the same time, sometimes there are complex things that need to be abstracted or need to be um, properly yeah. addressed in a summarized and efficient way with the lessons of the past. And that's, yeah, that's complex, but I do feel we can um, create intelligent systems that really understand the nuances of things and help us with this sort of decision making. Yeah, that's really interesting. I have a question, <coughs> not high level, but just for all of you. Um, <coughs> are we by just focusing on the idea of so much, this, concentrating so much of our collective energy and decision making um, from the perspective of the DAO, are we compartmentalizing us more and more? Do we definitely our human consciousness at this point, I think, is not necessarily ready for so much decision making. We would maybe sad for every single decision that we make in our daily life. How do you see, uh, just in, in, in future and very high level, um, if I have to be concerned about the decision making for everything that I involve in my life, I start, start creating communities that are more almost like, um, you know, uh, specific. So we start specializing on so you know, you, you, I have to be involved about I don't know, a, you know, a particular investment or also something about governance in my neighborhood, and then we become, you know, is this an over? What's the way of actually us ended up uh, or concentrating our efforts in like compartmentalized things that we kind of lose? It's almost like we're losing um, a connection with the with the large picture which is what we're trying to do with decentralization. But then, because we're involved in so many small things, we're kind of like just, I have to participate in this and this and this, and we can't possibly participate in everything. Yeah, maybe re relevant to that, um, I'm also always thinking about in terms of like how brain does that, basically. And that's why I uh, mentioned, uh, I mean, collective memory is something else, but. Um, memory, let's say, perception, experience, and all that. These are not because uh, these are not distinct from each other. These are not um, mutually exclusive and isolated uh, things. So we tend to uh, the old paradigm. Uh, we tend to think about the, uh, I mean, the the, the cell that's just um, is right right into my uh, retina. It it does what it does. It just has like two functions, whatever it like. I and mean, is it light or not? Let's say. But, uh, and then there's a more complex level, um, connectivity level uh, pro processes, and we call that a thought, decision making, and everything. But it's actually not like that. There's a constant top down um, connection and uh, feedback loop um, in, in the brain. And um, if there's a little bit of, like, if we, if we can call that a group, uh, then that definitely sends back information, whatever is that state, uh, back to the uh, single cell, uh, cell uh, level. So that's really important, I think, also, uh, because we don't have, individually, we, we cannot have the same experience to make the same choice in a, in a way. But eventually, the collective decision making is um, to, to say, like, these individual differences are all together are gonna normalize each other towards a better for everyone kind of thing. So it's just gonna like, in, in, all um, accumulated together, it's gonna uh, be the best for the majority. So we have just uh, that, that kind of an approach thinking that it is a good thing. But individually we have super different experiences, but collective experience is also something because eventually like if you are, if you're a group, for instance, 
S21 now has an experience. Although it is super centralized, we are three people in the admins and I'm doing everything, but we're still <laughs> taking <laughs> democratic decisions each and every time we want to um, do something about the, like, I mean, something that really matters uh, if we want to add a, a rule and everything. Um, so we still uh, follow uh, that, beca exactly because um, avoiding the central um, point of failure, basically. But if you ask me my experience and like my complaints about like what should be done or like what's happening because of what we are not doing, one thing and everything is totally different than the others. Um, but we have a certain um, collective um, understanding of like what happened so far and what we like about it, what uh, the, the core principle of it, although it's like different, I like that bit of it more and another person uh, likes that bit of, uh, of it a little bit more. But the majority, like the whole S21 is a kind of good complementary uh, of each um, part. So um, I, I would say like units, like different units with their own experiences, with their own perception of what's going on there, um, and the communication between these units and individuals, like more dynamic system, then we can just like ask yes or no questions in DAOs is going to be the future, let's say, because it can be um, there. But yeah, I mean, I'm likely to idealistic on this. Sorry, I just lost myself a little bit. Yeah, maybe I'll add here, I think there should be a mix of uh, direct and uh, um, uh, representative democracy where we decide which uh, of the decisions we delegate to somebody and which of these decisions we want to make ourselves. And I think also in the decentralized world, one of the benefits over the, our like the classic world is that uh, here it's not the winner takes it all. We can like say in a DAO we there are two conflicting uh, proposals, so uh, there can be two big groups, uh, one for each and one for another one. We cannot kind of impose uh, the decision uh, uh, like some decision over everyone if not everyone is, is uh, uh, like in uh, they agree with that. So. In DAOs, we can basically rage quit. Uh, they can be become two uh, DAOs in parallel, uh, one following one direction, another following another direction, and then then basically it's two communities which are in inside themselves are very solid. And then after some time, we can actually see the results of this. Uh, uh, to your question, long-term uh, decisions. I mean, it's kind of like A/B testing. And uh, uh, compared to the Web 2 world when this kind of entities they split, they both uh, have their own uh, uh, share of value because it's captured in the token. Uh, and we don't lose that like uh, to some uh, to some proposal we don't agree with. I'm gonna add one last thing to uh, <laughs> to uh, pamper a a little bit more, more that now that I uh, remember. So um, usually the centralized system is something that comes with a preset um, vision and a purpose. Uh, I mean, to name something extreme, like one state, one leader, um, one Reich, all that uh, is basically a trip, like having an agenda over there and uh, decide. I mean, even if you're going to ask the people in a, in a democracy, uh, def defining the the questions uh, based on your higher uh, good, higher goal, higher agenda. So it comes with a, a established uh, morality and direction of the uh, of, of that central government. Anyway, what's good? Like I mean, we are t talking about like um, generally if it's if if uh, emotion passes or not, but. What's good about DAOs is also anyone in the society can um, offer something and by just offering that thing, it uh, adds something to the overall direction of the DAO, basically. Like, I can definitely suddenly say, like, I mean, can we just, like, go um, get in a pool and if everybody wants it, that's going to be a, a tradition in our events, for instance. And you can also do something like that. And that's 
that's good. Uh, otherwise, it's like um, every time you need to take an action, you need to wait the central government to actually get that into their agenda, basically. So that's that's also what I like about the arts and the distributed communities. Shall we go for a drink? <laughs> that's a proposal. Who wants to have a drink? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.